It's all over, everyone. The dream is over. I'm not going to bother with this video, <laughs> Ryan. The, the dream's <laughs> over. Unfinished. Time, what's, what's, what dream's finished? So last two times we've done this video, it's different spots outside the ground. Uh, I've been wearing this all three times now. You have uh, decided not to wear the traditional kit for a pre-Rangers video. So as far as I'm concerned, we're losing on well, Monday now. Well, you know, it's a cold day. I had to wrap up. I'm sure it's, that... It was cold in February and you I, still I, had I know, the... I know, but like, this is a fleece and it's keeping me nice and toasty. My hand is freezing. I would have gloves on if I could. Listen, it's, it, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Blame Ryan if if it, if it, if it doesn't go to plan on Monday. Blame Ryan. You were here yesterday. I was actually. How, I, how was that game? Five oh, two for the Celtic B. It was brilliant. I I actually was going to bring that up. Um, it was a good watch. Good to see some of the potential future stars of the club, and obviously, hopefully, some foreshadowing as to what happens on Monday. Two one behind, end up winning five two. Piece of cake. Looked a decent enough crowd as well. Good it was atmosphere. Like, it was a good, and a good crowd. I um, there was quite a few there. Obviously, all, we were all situated in an off stand. Yeah. Um, a, a, you know, a good mix. A, a good crowd young guys, older guys. It was a good support for the B team. I'm sure Darna Day and Stephen McManus would have appreciated it. Yeah, they were calling out for a for a big crowd and that's the kind of games you want them to have as well. And as you say, always nice at any level to, to see Celtic beating Rangers and hopefully a sign of things to come. Um, we are obviously here to look ahead to Monday's match, that big game in 2023, that futuristic year uh, at Ibrox against Rangers. Doesn't it sound right, does it? 2023. I feel how, like how does how does a uh, nine sound nine, nine points clear? It is nine, oh, isn't it? it? There's is, been some it reports is. this week, some managers saying other thing. It is nine. Ah, it's definitely not three. It's <laughs> nine. Yes, just to reiterate, nine. How, how are you feeling about a nine point advantage chance to go twelve points clear if we win at Ibrooks? I mean, if we could go twelve clear, ugh, you know, it's a really good position to be. I mean, nine is no bad, but twelve. Um, yeah, I'm really confident heading into this game, and it's not even just down to being nine points clear. Just the yeah. way we've been playing, they're obviously under a, a wee bit of a shake up with a new manager. It's a good position to be in heading into this game. So, I'm fairly looking forward to it. Without meaning to repeat myself, everyone, you know, video yesterday, I very much made it clear that I'm, I'm kind of quietly confident about this game. We bit apprehensive as to not knowing much about this Rangers team under under the new manager. I've seen a couple of their games, but you never know exactly what's going to turn up. My big kind of thing is the start to the game, and yeah. I think they're going to come at it hell for leather. They're going to have, you know, 99% of the stadium supporting them. I think they're going to try and make us feel really uncomfortable. It worked last time to an extent. They got that early goal. I think that's my only real kind of fear going into this game is that we get, you know, we kind of... Uh, I've not got a fear that we turn up expecting to win I don't think the team will do that but we just turn up and, and kind of not 100% at it from the first yeah. minute I think if we start well and really um, you know have the possession quiet the crowd down and, and put the fear into Rangers with some early chances possibly an early goal ideally I, I think we could be in for a good game it's just the start that, that's the big thing for me well you've seen kind of glimpses of that against Hibs didn't we like, you know we, 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 kind yeah. of had to, we had to yeah. weather a storm quite early on they end up scoring the offside goal you know it, it took us a wee bit of time to just find yeah. our foot in the game and I think that'll be the same sort of case when we go to Ibrox as you mentioned they scored early on back in April so as long as we can we can weather that storm early on I'm sure we'll be fine um, because I think we've showed it time and time again that if teams want to get and amongst us, you know, we'll just bide our time and then we'll get amongst them. So I'm hoping that's the case. But we've done a good job against Hibs. We ended up finding the goals and, that, and then that just flattened Hibs. So, I mean, Rangers obviously a better side. I just hope it kind of works the same way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know what you mean. It's just the, the first few minutes against Hibs, and it was only a few minutes, but Aye. they did have that offside goal. And you just you just wonder, you know, if that's Easter Road, you just worry a little bit in the atmosphere. But having said that, I mean, as we say, the last game, we went behind, as we said yesterday in the channel, the stadium's jumping. It would have been easy for the Celtic team to crumble, and we did the polar opposite. So yeah. even if, you know, hopefully this doesn't happen, but we get off to a similar start. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to be worried about the team completely lo losing their composure or anything no, like that. No, absolutely not. And I think, you know, you touch on the atmosphere, the, the thing is about this Ibrooks crowd is, despite the fact it's a new manager and they're all wanting to get behind them, if they don't start this game well, it will turn no, very quick. They're, they're, they're not, worried. They're they're not worried. in a position right now to be, you know, taking, taking it lightly. Um, and we've seen that, you know, they were very, very vocal about Giovanni van Bronckhurst. And it won't be long before the vote. I mean, I've seen a plenty of them already complaining about the way they've been winning games. If they don't start this game off in, in the best possible way, I think the crowd will turn very quickly. And obviously that plays right into Celtic's hands. I've seen that numerous times over the past four or five years. I don't, I don't think there's the same gulf as there was at, at this period, but it, 
similar in a way to me to the Rodgers versus yeah, yeah, yeah. those days in that they are struggling a bit I think they're better than they were back then but I just think this all-conquering Celtic machine coming yep. to iBooks and I think deep down they would never admit it to you <laughs> no, but I no. think if they're chatting between themselves tonight and they're re night nights out they, they'll deep down they'll be worrying they're about worried. what yeah. happens if Celtic get an early goal and start all this um you know, a t- you know, quick tempo and all of this great passing. You, you've probably seen the the thread in a certain forum that I won't mention about. You know, what do we do if the ball lands in your lap? I don't give it back. Fo- to I wonder them what quickly. forum that is actually. It rhymes with hollow, hollow. How about <laughs> that? Uh, but they're, they're 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 petrified. I mean, imagine Aye. they were coming here. We wouldn't be saying, oh, you know, if the ball lands in your lap, don't give them it back. And no. I hope the ball boys and ball girls I was about are told. To say, I guess the advantage is Ibrooks they don't have the Celtic ball boys. You know, yeah. I made them again. A right good complaint after the last one about them. So maybe. Their ball boys will slow it down for the. But it's such a weird bit. thing because they're they are going to be looking to slow the game down. Yeah, I think you're yeah, going absolutely. to see this, but it's it, they're the ones who kind of have to win the game. Oh, the, so it's a strange kind of paradox. The pressure's on Rangers to win. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that Celtic don't have any pressure going into this because it's a derby at the end of the day. You want to win these games. Yeah. You have the chance to go 12 clear, and at that point, I think a lot of people will be saying, you know, the title could be sort of wrapped up. So there is pressure on Celtic, but the pressure's on Rangers. They need a result for this for so many reasons. Yeah. It's not as if a win's going to suddenly open a tie race for them straight away but it's certainly it's motivation for them to yeah. go on and do better so I'd say you know the pressure lies 99% here with, with them probably yeah uh, we're recording this prior to Angie's press conference as is often yes. the case however we have is the press conference here the day uh, or is it Lennox it Town be at Lennox I think uh, it's usually at Lennox, it Lennox Town, Town. Be after I, was just, I was just wondering in case we've seen a black <laughs> Range Rover or something stroll up the Celtic way we'd like, ask him to come on or something yeah he probably would have as well he loves the <laughs> channel Ange um, he has actually been speaking to Sky Sports though earlier today so we do have a little bit of an idea as to uh, a couple of things regarding team selection uh, the really sad news as far as well everyone but especially Ryan is concerned yes. is Haksavanovic uh, pretty much ruled out I'm going to say he has ruled out yeah, I, and said that he he wouldn't play, um, so I guess that means he's ruled out. Good news is Greg Taylor is fine. I think we got that after the game because he posted like on Instagram saying ready for Monday, so yeah. that was pretty clear. Uh, the other kind of talking points to do with Johnston, uh, Alistair Johnston and uh, Yuki Kobayashi, uh, effectively Celtic need international clearance for them to be able to play at Ibrooks. They can't apply, to it, uh, apply for it until midnight tonight. So someone's on call. I don't know who it is. <laughs> what honestly, unfortunate person is in there at the moment? I don't um, envy the person who has to spend the bells waiting for the, the whatever system they use to apply for this. I do not envy <laughs> that job at all. <laughs> so, uh, but but hopefully it, it'll pay dividends and we, we might get you know at least one of them on the park. Uh, we'll come on to our team. I, yes. I've got this really strange suspicion that he's going to do something fly. And I think Alistair Johnson is going to start at Ibrox. I seen your tweet Discuss. this morning. I seen your tweet this morning saying that you had a, a kind of daft feeling yeah. as you worded it that he would start the game. I don't think he'll start, but I do think we'll see him. I think he'll come right. on the park at some point. I think he might get some minutes, um, but I just still think that Juranovic is going to play. Um, right. He was well, on the bench. What do you make Hibs. of the point Scott McDonald made yesterday in that you know? Maybe Juranovic isn't going to be here much longer. There's a fair bit of chat. I would say it's fifty-fifty whether he uh-huh. leaves in January. Can you still trust a player uh, to give his all um, if they maybe think they're going to leave the club in such a big game? Or, or would you not rather someone fresh in the door ready? I think that you can trust them. Um, I think that he's just he's that good a player. Look, listen, I know it's up for debate how good a season Juranovic has had. There's no secret that for club anyway, he's been sort of hit or miss maybe this season for Be, a lot of Playing folk. devil's advocate, I might get in trouble for saying this, but I, I wonder with the World Cup coming up if he throughout the start of the season maybe rightly so had the World Cup in his mind and maybe that's, that's why we didn't you know see exactly it's, it's a very good point but I just think that it depends on the manager's viewpoint as well I think but I, I just see him playing his best team and right now his best team consists of a back four that has Juranovic in it so if everyone's like fit and available including Hitati who I don't think will play it right back and, and Ralston as well no yeah. one's really talking about Ralston um, it's nearly two weeks I think since he kind of went off yeah, against right, Livingston two weeks he could be an option as well to start we, we just don't know do we no it's, it's, a, it's a guessing game and this is one thing that we discussed on the podcast the other day and just got a, a really good um, thing of always surprising us in these games yeah. I think you're always like oh he's sure fat to start and then there's always one you know, okay right, I did not expect yeah. him to be starting so it might be Johnson it could be it could be somebody else but 
Um, I it's, it's just I guess eleven o'clock Monday we'll find out who it is at right back. I suppose. Yeah, um, eleven fifteen. But we'll eleven fifteen. Oh, sorry. Uh, give us your give us your team then. Uh, right, so Hart and goals obviously. I think the back four will be Juranovic, Vickers, Starfelt, and Taylor. I'm glad that Taylor's fit and ready to play because he's been playing so well. You know, if he was to miss this game, I think it'd be gutting for him, let alone the team. Yeah. You know, to miss it on this occasion. So I'm going for that midfield three. I've went for McGregor, Moy, and Hitati. Okay. It's my three in the middle. Um, nothing on O'Reilly because I've seen a few people kind of starting on him recently. But good player to come off the bench. And then my front three. I think I'm the only person that's said this so far. That I don't think Maida's going to start. I yeah, don't right. think Maida's starting. So I'm going Jota, Kyogo, and Abada as the front three. Okay, I that's think we. Team. I think we differ in three places. Go I'm. Free. I'm going for nice Hart. I'm going for Johnston at right back. Right. Carter, Vickers, Starfelt, Taylor, McGregor. Uh, Hitati I am going O'Reilly it's, it, it's go, uh, This is going I, I would probably start Moy Right Just based on how well he played yeah. in midweek But you're always going between And I don't quite know what this is Whether this is our team Or whether this is the team we think Angel play yeah. I think O'Reilly will start I just think everyone's got it in their head now Moy's going to start And I just As Scott Scott kind of convinced me yesterday Will Ange break up that midfield trio If he, if he can avoid it I, Getting Hitati it's back it's in a there good, It's a good dilemma to have at the end yeah. of the day and Good sub I mean, as well O'Reilly I think he does so much He's been great against he's, Rangers he's, as well. He's been good against Rangers, and when he was playing in McGregor's role when he was injured, mm. I think he was so good at some of the off the ball stuff, which is probably important at Ibrox as well. I just have a feeling that because Moy's been playing so well recently that he will get the nod. But I guess yeah. what you're saying is, is it's valid, of course. You know, like will he break up that three? Good question. Uh, in front three again, slightly different. I'm going a badder. Kyogo and I am going Maida. It's crazy Maida. that that so many people don't have Jota in their team. I just think. You know, it's quite simple. Maida played so well in midweek. Yeah. I think even if he hadn't have played so well, there'd be an argument for him, given how well he did last time at Ibrox. I thought he was potentially our best player that day, you know, in terms of what he offered off the ball. But he also had a couple of really good runs and chances. Yep. One when he went round the keeper, he should have scored. So I think he's a real threat attacking-wise, as well as limiting uh, Tavernier, who I think is a real weak link at the well, moment. I was about to say, yeah, I was about to say, a lot of Rangers fans have been saying he's not 100%. Yeah. Is he? I think he's carrying some sort of knock. I mean, if you've got Maida on it, I think any of the wingers running at Tavernier could take him to the shops a few yeah, times. I, I that's do. a real big moment. Aye. And uh, Abada is the other one. I just think yeah. back post Abada. So, he's so good against, against Rangers, isn't he? Uh, Barisic, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> is that your best your best but I, I can't bit lower than that my knees have up in the cold mate I'm not getting any lower uh, it is freezing by the way you're probably watching this in in like Melbourne or something like that <laughs> yeah, know, Brisbane right. that's absolutely roasting Out so the beach for, for New Year's enjoying yourself Aussies uh, no one's really talking about Kyogo either um, I feel like we've had this chat before every derby but yeah. is this his one to shine this I is, have the feeling this is his one to shine this is the first derby where I think the striker is nailed on there's no yeah. I, well, there's been a couple where the other's been injured so it has been nailed but the, but the first that both have been fit and it's been nailed on with everything that's going on with Jack and Marcus at the minute with the weight Kyogo the form the form that he's been in it's, there's not no brain to start and the one thing that I'm looking forward to as you said uh, this is the first derby I feel like he, He's got a real solid chance at it because the first one he ended up playing in the left, Edward was still here. Mm. Then he was injured and he played in one, ended up going halfway an injury, and it's just never really worked out for him. He's never had that luck. And people talk about his lack of derby goals. I feel like he's never really had the chance of these derby goals. So this, this is the one if he's to get them. Yeah, he, and yeah. he's he's in red hot form as well. He's he not is. even he's not even playing amazingly in matches, but he's Aye. just he's just such a a, a good mover yeah. and and such a poacher at the moment. And I just really. I really back him to do it. Um, it's really just that first derby at Ibrox where he played in the left wing and he had, he had chances when he got moved up front late in because that game. Because he should have so. got an assist in that game. Uh, Edward. Edward, he scuffed it or whatever and it just, you know, like, yeah. he, he could have started off with a bang, but here we are. Uh, what have you made so far of Rangers under uh, Ian Beale? You, you seen much of them? <laughs> Ian Beale. Didn't expect you to drop that. I've seen, I watched a couple of the games, I watched Ross County, oh, thought God. they were... So, sorry to hear you give your Friday night up for that. I was, uh, that. You know, I was sitting there with a few beers and there was, you know, the darts was on, that was on, and you kind of switched between the two. I thought they were rotten, uh, to be quite honest. I watched the Aberdeen game, I thought they were rotten. <laughs> and uh, I watched the, the Hibs game and I thought they were rotten. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... We team developed. Aye, we team developed. Listen, it's, it's obviously going to take time. The thing is, they got the big result in their last game. They, they scored a few goals, they got a win, and ultimately, they're four for four under Beal. So, in terms of results, they're, they're doing the right thing, they're winning games, but if both teams play the way they've been playing, um, 
which is sometimes very rare for a derby. Celtic should be winning the game, no bother. And I'm not scared to say that because mm. we're a much better side. I don't look at the Rangers team with an awful lot of threats. There's not a lot of players that worry me in that team at the minute. And I think that Michael Beale has a bit of a get out of jail free card with these next couple of derbies. I think he needs a transfer windows and then we'll probably have a, a far bigger task in our hands. But, I mean, who knows? It's, it, you know what these derbies are like. On the day, if Rangers turn up and, and Celtic are sleeping, they could catch us out. But they've not impressed me much, as Shania Twain would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I agree. I've seen, I think, a couple of those games. I uh, saw the Aberdeen away game. Still don't know how they won that. And Ross County away. I thought the second half for Ross County, they were kind of all right. But I think Ross County are the poorest team in the league at yeah. the moment. So, um I think they'll be better on Monday. I don't think it's a game we're going to turn up and, and beat them like 3 or 4 nil. like maybe some people are kind of hoping for. I think it's going to be a, a scrappy one. The one I can't get out of my mind, do you remember the first one under Brendan Rodgers at Ibrox where yeah, I think barely, Warburton was uh, managing them? They, and went, they, up, they went up one they went one and Kenny they? Miller scored. Uh, and they had that frantic start and almost similar to the, the last one at Ibrox yeah. under Ange and we just gradually the better team gradually got the upper hand and mm-hmm. we won that game 2-1 with the Dembele and Sinclair goals and I can't get that thought out of my head that maybe there'll be a frantic start and the better team will just gradually get it hopefully that's the case uh, right we'll come back at the end and get predictions and all that's of that fine. before that moments of 2022 I uh Stuck a tweet out the other day uh, just asking for this and we got loads and loads of replies in so I'm going to rattle through them now. Thanks very much if you got in touch and I've just realised the writing is so small here so what the hell dear is going oh dear. On there? Uh, I'm going to hold my phone like this. Uh, you know, zoom in. Oh. Uh, two, well, you, two, you can see it in the screen anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Roy, Carol Starfelt, first goal for the hoops. He so deserved the moment. I absolutely uh, loved it. Uh, I can only assume Roy's surname is Starfelt. That must be his da. <laughs> uh, an interesting choice, Roy, but I was against That's not what I expected. Aye, yeah. That's right. Aye. I remember watching that in a pub. And, uh, it was my favourite goal. I was, that in, day. I, was in, I was in Magaluf, uh, I believe, when that goal went in. So. That's a memory. I was in Kilmarnock. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Robbie Abada scoring the third on that cold Wednesday night in February. Um, I actually uh, found a little bit of footage that I forgot I'd taken. It was anarchy when that goal went in, wasn't it? It was madness. Yeah, absolute mad. I love. It. I just love a bit of anarchy in the stands. You know that. I just yeah. love it. Magic. The amount of folk in that video not even watching the game. See <laughs> when you watch like the highlights back of the goal, the amount of folk turned round, like not watching the ball going to the net. Aye. I w- I'd love to know. Like sixty thousand here that night. How many do you think actually saw the goal oh, with their eyes? I don't even know if I seen it with my eyes. To be honest, I think so. I, I, lo- I think I looked up when the ball. Uh, was just going into the box and it was the, it was the most perfect goal because you knew Barisic had just switched off and you could just see, see a bad of darting in behind yeah, him and you're right. just like then it's just it switch like that again it's like because it's like the decibels just kind of dropped slightly and then bangs right yeah. back up to the top magic love it I loved it that's probably the most uh, kind of uh, obvious one that I got in yeah. from people uh, but I've kind of kept it um, different here uh, Stoop Kid uh, well, I say that, but he's saying the ghost of a badder sneaking in uh, the six-yard box to score that goal on a beautiful night in paradise. We've got John Francis. It's got to be 3-0 against them. The atmosphere was electric. Hatati and Abada were mesmerising. Kalmak, Colin Barisic, a shite bag. Oh, Class. That was brilliant. Robert Gibson, Abada's last-minute winner against Dundee United. Never heard a roar like that at Celtic Park in a long time. Rangers had dropped points earlier that day in Dingwall. That was when the tide started to turn. That was a... Uh, I mean, those few days were remarkable. That was, a, that was a, wee, a wild day because I was actually in hospitality for that game. It was my dad's birthday. So we were in the, the Kerry deal in there yeah. and they had the Rangers game on in the big screens. And like, it the was roar K- must K- have been K- amazing. Each, I, was, I was roughly place, here. Like, I was walking around. The place was and erupted. I... And then obviously you go out to watch the game and think, Rangers have dropped points. And they're sitting there coming out. We we've bottled it. We've bottled Aye. it. And then bang. Do you remember Livingston earlier in the season? Was now now and everyone's thinking. See, I thought it was my fault. I was blaming myself because I wasn't sitting in my normal seat as us because I've moved seat today. That's why. But I. It, it's happened a couple of times hasn't it with Celtic like you know there's those chances and then you're like are we going to take it are we going to take it and then 
we never stop, I suppose, as the big yeah. man says. That was a that was a hell of a day. Coming yeah. away and straight into the derby afterwards. Uh, Claire going for a good one. Hatati's face when Forrest was explaining to him he'd been awarded man of the match against <laughs> Hibbs. Uh, sums the guy up, works hard and stays humble. That was his wee face there oh. as well. Uh, Jack saying one more time after the Hearts game. Yes, Jack. This is a correct answer. Well done. This is what I went for as well. Those scenes after the game. Uh, tears running down my face. It was... <laughs> It was amazing, just knowing we were champions again. Uh, Matt going similarly, trophy day, Rogic's farewell, Angie's speech and scenes after it was class. Angie's speech, not many people have mentioned that as a Aye, potential moment of the year. Again, you've embraced this jumper. And I was, I love what, do you know what I always hate about the speeches though? See, in the stadium, do you not find it pure difficult to hear the mics? Yeah, I can not. never make it all they're they're saying, nah, and they, The system's all like, they brought out Johnson and... Uh, uh, Kobayashi yeah, I that, and I can I can make it a word then in the must <laughs> I know they need to find a, a better way to, to do that and also folk have had a bit to drink and they're singing and all uh, that and exactly. like, just for a minute uh, let's hear uh, hands but that was magic uh, Shane going for a bit self-indulgent of this one but it's seeing the boys live for the first time ever in Sydney that moment of seeing them walk out and singing like Never Walk Alone I've seldom been happier that makes me feel happy. That does really that nice. a spell on my face. And that was one of the highlights I think of the year was seeing that Sydney Super Cup and the, the way that it was embraced over there for the, the Celtic fans. Yeah. And you know, there's all this talk about one potentially happening in Japan as well next year. I hope so because it, it's good to see people get the opportunity. It's not easy to get over to Glasgow for a you know a game. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't really want to either. <laughs> no, exactly. Look at We're not really look selling it, are we? <laughs> it's a bit of probably rain. I know. I know. Uh, Timothy Calmack hitting the post against Real. It showed that we can threaten even the best of teams. I think if that had gone in that. Might have been that would have been, one. Go, have been going even if we'd have lost have been, the game. That would have been up there in terms of ever. How, like how often do you think year. about that? Uh, I've, I've not thought about it in a while, and I'm sad that we brought it up now. Uh, um, I, you know, it's why the ones if that went in, how how different could the game have been? I suppose. Yeah. Uh, I think that first half or whatever it was, 55 minutes until they scored, is probably the best we played all year. Yeah. Even better than I mean, the you consider Rangers the game. opposition you're playing as well. Because like, they weren't bad in that oh, first half. I know, that's not, they didn't play mugs that day yeah. either. They had their best team out yeah. in the park. Ten you know of the players mean? who won the Champions League, plus <laughs> two of many who's no bad. Aye, so, know, yeah, that McGregor chance was uh, gutting. Uh, Logan bringing up, uh, beating the rivals 4-0 was oh, special. I was obviously talking about Hibs the other night. <laughs> uh, it's weird, everyone kind of goes for the 3-0 game over Rangers rather than the 4-0. 3-0 th- game is just more The 3-0 has a special aura around night, it. Night time. First time we'd beaten them. Exactly. Like, and then obviously the, the, the way that it kind of happened, we, of course we touched on the goals just kind of coming yeah. in. I know that kind of happened in the 4-0 game as well, but with the 3-0 it was just sort of... Aye, I think everybody was bevied as yeah. well, which made a, bit, a big yeah, difference. Definitely. Um, night games are the best. I, I, I'm thinking the, the way you sum this year up, right? See if you say, my moment of the year, right? Oh, that a bad a goal, that net there, put us 3 0 up against Rangers in the first half, and then you say, what one? <laughs> yeah, twice. Exactly, that sums exactly. it how good this year's been up. I and mean, we went, we went 3 0 up against Rangers before half time twice. twice. And imagine it happened again on Monday. Start off 2023 with a banger. Incredible. <laughs> uh, and finally, Joe Brown going for CCV at Castle Grayskull in April. Won the league that day. Uh, that was magic as well. I think Aye. just just being at Celtic Park, though, kind of makes the, the Celtic... It for does. me, anyway, the Celtic Park one's uh, incredible. Uh, what was your best memory? What are you going for? Oh, I, I, on a personal note, right, despite defeat, I love the Leipzig away trip. I really did. I enjoyed that. Just that whole trip was that, nice. Nice week. Tuesday night. Nice week. Week. You bumped I, I, into exactly. The bumped into you. That was a good wee trip. Same with Warsaw as well. That was a good wee trip. Um, do, you, do you remember that? I don't know if I should bring this up. That to, that toilet. The toilet. Do I remember? <laughs> probably too scooched to remember the toilet. To be honest, I do remember the uh, toilet. What, what was on the floor? Up. Oh god. Probably use your imagination. Uh, let's just leave it at that. I suppose. But if I was to pick one above all. Um, I probably have to go for the three 0 in February as well. I know it's such a basic answer, but it was just it was magic, and it, it's like I feel like I'd be lying to myself if I didn't pick the three 0 uh, because that yeah, was, you'd, be, you'd be trying. I to think kind if of I was to, another one, if you were to measure my like serotonin levels over <laughs> the course of the whole year, it spiked that night. So I, it's got to be that. I think that may be one of my favourite Celtic games. Oh, ever, ever easily, just... I, easily up there. Like yeah. I always thought that the five one could never be topped with the Belly scored the hat trick and. I think that might have done it. I really yeah, do think I it did. Aye. Couldn't have made it more spe- uh, special. Uh, right, I'll lower the tone again often do this. Officials for Monday. Oh, referee God. John Beaton, assisted by Daniel McFarlane and Doogie Potter, Harry's brother. Uh, fourth <laughs> official is Don Robertson. VAR, uh, oh, 
Willie Collum oh, and assistant VAR Jesus. is David McGeechy. They're rolling out the big guns for this game. You've got uh, Beaton, Robertson and Collum all involved in some capacity. Uh, we're going into the Lions' den here. There aren't going to be any Lions not there. Not any Lions there, are, are there? But, but seriously, I mean... Do you, you know, believe the conspiracies yet? Because I'm starting to become a right Celtic da. <laughs> I, I honestly am. I'm turning. The, like I always hated it. I always hated hearing about conspiracies, but I think I'm there now. I've, I've yeah. accepted it. I really hope VAR doesn't play a huge part in this game, but you just know it is. It it's going to be it anarchy. Will. Um, final thing I want to say: this Celtic team have proven to me anyway that they thrive on chaos. I think we like to have control in games, but also when things are chaotic. The team thrives on it. You know, you look back at Ibrooks last time, you look at the Hearts game earlier this season, yep. late on here against Dundee United, late at St Johnson, we find the late winner, um, Aberdeen away. I just think the team um, loves these occasions and I think they're going to thrive on it again at Ibrooks. Yep. Uh, how's it going to go, Ryan? Is this you asking for my score Aye. prediction? Um, well, you said earlier on you didn't want, you didn't think many people would admit to 3 or 4 nils. I'm going 3 nil Celtic. Wow. I'm going 3 nil. Listen, I've said what I've said. If it comes back to slap me in the face, it does. But this is the most confident I've been heading to Ibrox in a long, long time. Maybe the most confident I've been for a derby wildly in a long time as well. I just don't rate too much of what I've seen for Rangers. There's not a lot of players there that really worry me at the minute. Celtic are, are, are playing really well. I just, I, I, you know, I could play it safe and say, you know, 2 1, 1 0, 2 0. I just think we can score goals. And if we can weather the storm early on, as we spoke about, I think if we don't concede early on, we don't concede at all. So I'm going for I'm going for three now. Bugger it, may as well. Fair play, mate. Nah, Fair play, may as well. I don't, uh, don't do it normally uh, nowadays, but here we are. Yeah, I think he said he said three now last time. Oh, or maybe I? it was before <laughs> the the three now game. He oh, said well, three now. Maybe I do then. Yeah. Um, yeah, as I say, I can't get that that two one game in 2016. Uh, that would have been a New Year game as well. Out my head. Uh, I'm not saying we're going to go behind. I hope that's you know not the case, but. I think Rangers won, Celtic two is what I'm going for. You're going for the Kieran Old bet. Yeah, and and just hopefully after the game, you know, we're 12 points clear. Or, you know, worst case, nine points clear. Because nine points clear, I think there's an argument to to an extent you take it. I mean, I I think we all back ourselves to win the game and we hope we win. Um, But I think coming out of the winter break, if you'd have said, you know, being to to Aberdeen, being to Easter Road, being to Ibrook, still a nine-point advantage, you would have taken it. So I think we're in a good position. I can't wait for it. Were you watching it? Uh, probably just in the house to be honest right, sorry to hear that oh, hey, I'll be at the pub but you're not invited I um, oh, hope you. you have a lovely new year everyone uh, yeah and uh, that's kind of all I've got to say I uh, hope you have a lovely new year Thank as you well very much you too Hamish and uh, we'll speak to you in 2023 after the game at Ibrooks. chat to you then <laughs>